We got homemade orange marmalade. Really good. And real iced tea. No sugar. Can I put it on? You know how? How? I'll show you. Like that? Yeah, and you have to make sure it's balanced there good. Wheels are turned the right way. Okay. You put this up. See how this works? This has got to go in in the back. And then this tightens it down. Make it tight. Is that good? Okay, once it's tight, Daddy can lock it. So they can't take this front one off. Mm -hmm. If you can't take the front one off, then the back ones don't need to be locked because you can't take those off. Mm -hmm. We are once again at a Costco in Mexico. <laughs> we drove to the town of Querétaro, where our friend Cynthia is from. Her family still lives here, but we're not staying for long. We're just going to stay for a couple hours. Came to the Costco, ate lunch. You know, Costco is like a cheap place for lunch in the U.S., but it's not cheap to eat here in Mexico because regular food is a lot less, but it's like, it's like a guilty pleasure for us. You know, it's a, because the Costco here are just like the Costco's in the U.S. So, we can come here and soak up a little bit of United States before we get back out there. Kiritara is a pretty big town. There's like 800,000 people here, so they have everything. In fact, something we wish we had known before we came here is they have a Buffalo Wild Wings. I'm a huge fan of chicken wings, buffalo wings, and Buffalo Wild Wings is one of my favorite places to go just because all the sauces. You can buy a chicken coop here. You can buy a chicken coop. So we haven't had it in so long, and the kids love their mac and cheese. So, we seriously consider staying the night in a hotel just so we can go eat there tomorrow. I don't think we're gonna. Sounds a little crazy. So we're just gonna do a little bit of shopping here and we're gonna get back on the road and we're gonna try to make it to um, another town just outside of Mexico City where there's a campground next to a pyramid, the Aztec or Mayan pyramid, I forget which one. So probably just stay there for the next few days and maybe uh, explore Mexico City from there. We're still driving. How'd it go? It's embarrassing because at 10 in you gotta judge how much toilet paper you need and I just kept pulling. I only had a big one like this. You have to pay for to... how much toilet paper you use? No, but there was an attendant there staring at me getting the toilet paper. Oh. So it was embarrassing. How much was it to go? Three pesos? It's worth it for them to hire somebody to sit there and charge three pesos. <laughs> You're crazy. All right, well we stop to use the bathroom. Uh, We're about um, 35, 40 miles away from where we need to be. San Miguel de Allende to um, Queretaro 
and then from there we had lunch and then we drove from there to this town about a little bit northeast of Mexico City this town is called I believe it's called Teotihuacan I may be totally botching the name up but it is a town that's well known for a couple of ancient pyramids so we're here at a campground it was pretty uneventful except for a couple of things but when we were leaving San Miguel de Allende we kind of went on the tour of the town we drove through a whole bunch of one-way streets and narrow cobblestone alleys really narrow like some places we could barely fit and then there's a car coming the other way so that was exciting and then we finally found our way there was a lot of traffic when we finally got to this campground that we're at which is a pretty nice campground just big grassy field and uh, a mean dog like there's like three dogs here not the white one but the Dalmatian is mean was it mean to you or did you just somebody else just say that mama said that yeah somebody else said that and mama read it but we don't know for sure if it's mean or not but it was mean to somebody else right Driving here, my tire pressure sensor uh, had a fault. And I thought nothing of it because, I don't know, it happens a lot. Not a lot, but like at least once every other week, it'll go, it'll, it'll have a fault and it will clear itself. So basically the way how these things work, they transmit wirelessly to the control unit. And sometimes the control unit can't get the signal from the tire sensor. And if it doesn't get a signal, it just produces a fault. It doesn't give it enough information to tell me what the actual fault is. So every single fault looks the same. So today it happened. I didn't think anything of it. And that may not have been the actual problem anyways. Because when I got to this campground, I found out there was a nail in my driver's side rear tire. And it was a pretty long nail because when I tried to go pry it out, and it had a head on it pretty big. I mean, it had like a dime-sized head on it. I'm guessing it was actually a screw because the head had like a square bit so that makes me think it's actually a screw and when I try to go pull it out with some with some pliers as I kind of nudge it over I can hear air come out so I know but this screw is actually keeping the air in I actually don't think the screw had been in there for very long because most of the screw head was still there and it was right at the surface of the tire so it had it been on there for more than five ten miles the road would have grounded it down pretty good. So I don't actually think I got it when the tire sensor had a fault because that was a lot of miles before we got here. So I think we actually got it in town somewhere. Luckily for me, we have a full size spare. So the first thing we did when we got here was to get the spare put on. The only jack we have is like the factory jack. So I had to scrounge around for some boards to get it up high enough. Jack the axle up. I didn't have any jack stands. So I had to leave the tire on, get the lug nuts off, and when I got the lug nuts all off, pulled the tire off and quickly put the spare on. So we've got the brand new full size spare on there now, which I'm actually kind of cool about it because I like our spare rim better than the stock rims. The spare rims basically look just like the stock rims, except they're steel and they're black. And the factory stock rims are like a dull silver. But I sprayed matte plastic dip on it. So they look black now, so they actually kind of all match. It's just the other rims are a lot dirtier. And this rim, when I, this spare, when I put it on, there was a lot of Baja dirt still on there. So we're good for now, but um, yeah, we gotta get it fixed. Cause right now, as of right now, we don't have a spare. And if I catch another nail or a screw in one of the tires, I'm a little screwed. No pun intended. Uh, we're gonna be here for at least a couple of days. We may stay here even longer if we decide to venture into Mexico City. Tomorrow we'll probably do nothing. We'll probably just stay here and work and do school. And then maybe early Friday morning, before everybody gets up and gets out, we're gonna try to get out to see the pyramid and then be back here before it gets too hot. Oh, by the way, tomorrow's Cinco de Mayo, which means something's gonna happen here in Mexico. But that also means today is May the 4th, so. May the 4th be with you.